In this video, I'm going to be going over insulation and which R value I put in my walls, my attic, and my crawl space. This itchy stuff is really important to use because you need to make sure you keep heat in your house and it keeps your house soundproof. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Josh. It's is all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So before I take you up to the attic and down to the crawl space, I first want to go over some basic principles to insulation and what types there are. Let's go to the whiteboard. Welcome to Insulation 101. So all insulating material has what's called an R value rating on them. And all the R value represents is how well the insulation can restrict heat flow from your house. So the R value is actually an equation. I'll put it up on the screen here so you can take a look at it. And don't ask me to do that equation because I do not know how to do it. All right, so now that we understand what the R value is, there's three common types of insulation you'll see in modern building. You got your spray foam insulation. That's gonna be the most expensive insulation and some can argue that that's the best insulation. So it all depends on what you're doing. Do you really need to spend the money on spray foam insulation? That's gonna be something you're gonna to have to decide, but that's gonna be the most expensive and arguably the best insulation. And what spray foam actually is, is two compounds joined together to make a polyurethane foam. So the stuff can be very sticky when wet and you'll see people spraying it that are all decked out in a suit and goggles and respirator because it's very toxic to breathe in while you're using it. And you can also get little cans of it, which you've probably seen before in Lowe's or Home Depot. They can spray around windows or doors or cracks that are in the wall that you need to fill. So you're probably familiar with that product. So what's in the can, you can get in a bulk product and that's what you'd use inside the wall cavities when you're doing spray foam insulation. Now that that first one's out of the way, the second most common would be rock wool. And what rock wool is, it's actually a wool made out of a mineral or a stone, and it's an extra fire resistant insulation. So you'll see a lot of people use rock wool as fire stops sometimes, and also they'll use it at, around fireplaces and things that there's gonna be an excess amount of heat. So rock wool has its purpose but it's not very common in all building, uh, building structures. It's mainly for around high temperature areas. And um, it still can make you itchy like the fiberglass insulation. So if you're gonna buy rock wool, just get away from the itchiness. That's not a good idea because it can still irritate your skin. So fiberglass insulation, this is gonna be your most affordable option. That's what I did throughout this whole house in the attic, the crawl space, and the walls. And if you've been following my channel for a while, I'm sure you've seen the insulation in the walls when I did a couple different videos, but I'll touch base on that here in just a moment here. So this is the most common, like I said, and it's probably gonna be something you're gonna to wanna to use if you're trying to build a house with the most affordable product, yet still very effective. Another product I wanted to mention is foam board insulation. These are photos from the house that I live in now when I finish the basement. I just put that against a block wall to give a little extra R value to keep the heat in. All right, so now that we know the basics of insulation, let's go up to the attic so you can see how I have that insulated. This is actually the first time I've been up here since the insulators did all this insulating. So as you can see right offhand, there's a couple of loose bats here. Well, everything that you see behind me and to the sides of me, that's all the same kind of material that's in these bats. It's just fiberglass insulation, and then they just blow it in this attic. So let me get up here and show you a couple more details about it. This fiberglass insulation is blown in with the machine, and how it works is there's these bundles of fiberglass that come loose, and they get put into a machine. It grinds up the insulation a little bit more and blows it out through a hose, and it's a long hose that travels through, and people walk around the attic blowing it in. It's an awesome process. But the thing about this blown in insulation, you wanna make sure you have at least 16 inches or so of the insulation when you blow it in, because each one inch is about 2.5 R value. So if you have about 16 inches, that should give you about a 38 R value or so. And 38 is, I'm gonna say, the minimum you're gonna want in your attic. And with this insulation in your attic, the more the merrier, really, as long as you don't cause any problems with your soffit or anything. So you can put up to two foot of this insulation in your attic and wouldn't be a problem. But you gotta start worrying about weight at that point. So about 16, 18 inches is fine. And that's what I would actually recommend. Now I wanna show you how I insulate above this cathedral ceiling 
because that's going to be a good way to do it if you have a slope because its insulation will fall with gravity. I really like how this company that I hired to do the insulation did this. They used R38 bats, laid them face down. They didn't blow it because if they did, it'd end up clear down here at these porches. And you don't want that, you'd end up with no insulation when it's all said and done. So I like what they did there. And this is just one of the bats, if you're curious to see what they look like. And the walls on the cathedral, they just put R15 in behind this and use styrofoam board to hold it into place. And it gives it a nice look and nice finish. And then for the soffit, let me walk over here and show you how you do the soffit. This attic is vented using ridge vent, and the ridge vent needs soffit venting in order to ventilate properly. And if we take a look here, this insulation does not clog up the soffit because it has these cardboard vent pieces that allow air to go up by the insulation that's blown in. So you can have the insulation up as high as those pieces of cardboard and allow your roof to vent, yet insulate your house at the same time. I just wanted to let you know that in case you have the same situation. If you're wondering how I installed this subfloor in this attic, be sure to check out the video in the top right hand corner of the screen. That's of me installing this subfloor. All right, let's go downstairs and check out those walls. I'm here in the master bathroom and this is where the tiled shower is going to be. It's a great place to show you what the insulation looks like inside the walls because the drywall are stopped here because the cement board gets installed for the tile. So as you can see, I'm using R15 here and the minimum R value in by code in my area is R13 on all the exterior walls and there does not have to be any insulation on the interior walls. but. This is an interior wall here, and the only reason why I have insulation here is for soundproofing purposes. So around bathrooms and laundry rooms is a great place to soundproof. So if you want to do that, that's up to you. But again, check your local building code to see where all you need to insulate. And there's a difference between faced and unfaced insulation. Faced insulation has this vapor barrier already built onto it to where unfaced doesn't and is just raw insulation. So I just want to show you the difference there. And now let's go down to the crawl space because I want to show you how that got insulated. Another good idea for insulating the exterior walls is to run a bead of caulk around the sole plate here. So that way it keeps all the air from drafting into the house. Before I show you the insulation, I want to show you the vapor barrier here. This is six mil plastic that is to be put on the floor of the crawl space first in order to cut down on moisture. And then up above, we got R19 insulation and there's these wires about every four or five foot that hold the insulation in place and this is faced insulation but the vapor barrier is pointed towards the subfloor so that's all there is to the insulation in a crawl space now that you've seen how the house was insulated let's go over how much it cost so this house is about 3,000 square foot with nine foot ceilings and has the cathedral ceiling on a crawl space and the garage is about 24 by 24 with 11 foot ceilings roughly. And it has a concrete floor, of course. And now as of for material, this is gonna be about an estimate though, because I was given the total bill, but according to the insulator, he told me about what the breakdown was. So material wise, it was about $6,000 for all the material that you seen to do this house. So the blown in insulation, the crawl space insulation, the wall insulation, the caulking around the uh, bottom plate there, and all that ended up being about $6,000. And there was also some spray foam around wires and stuff that they used. And now for labor, it was about $3,000. So that gives us a total of $9,000 to insulate the house and the garage. Now keep in mind that the prices are gonna fluctuate different in different parts of the country. So labor in my area may be significantly less than labor around a big city somewhere. So just keep that in mind. And again, when it comes to getting a company to do a job for you, typically they can get materials and stuff cheaper than what a regular consumer can get. And in fact, these guys that I deal with, I got them to do one of my first houses and when they did it, I actually priced material myself. And just for me to buy the material was only about $500 more than what they were gonna to charge to get the material and install it for. And it was a 1500 square foot house with a, I think it was a 20 by 20 garage at the time. So just something to keep in mind. You uh, may be able to get the material and labor for about the same price as you can just get the material. 
And again, just check different people, check different companies and see where you can get the best price when getting any subcontractor. That's what I always recommend to anybody asking me about that. All right, guys, I hope you found a lot of value in this video. The next video I'm gonna be making is what is the price of drywall and how much did it cost to install and get the material. And if you're new to this channel, like I said, my name's Josh. This channel is all about building your house from the ground up. So you definitely don't wanna miss a video. And be sure to subscribe, ring that bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.